Welcome to PPND TV. I'm Senya Maiman, and I'm interviewing Margaret Greenberg. Hello, Margaret. Welcome to our show. Hi, Senya. Margaret is an executive coach and consultant, and she is the co-author with me of Profit from the Positive. And we will be asking Margaret a lot of questions about how she goes about implementing positive psychology into her coaching and consulting and her book writing practices. Hi, Margaret. Hi. We would love to hear a little bit more about you and your background. Sure. Um, I actually started the Greenberg Group, which is an executive coaching and consulting company, uh, back in 1997 after spending the first 15 years of my career in corporate HR in both learning and development and organizational development. And so for the last 17 years, I've been working with businesses, um, executives, uh, and their teams um, to produce results that they never imagined. Um, Perfect. I'm going to start with something very recent. Now, I know that as a, as a profit from the positive author, you had a very exciting week last week because we were both following it. Can you tell us what the Amazon Kindle deal of the day is and what that experience was like? Sure. Uh, the Kindle deal of the day was um, something that our, our publisher, McGraw-Hill, um, told us about that we were selected um, by Amazon and a few other um, um, carriers. And it felt like the way politicians must feel the night that election results are coming in or they're watching the TV and, and seeing the votes. That's what it felt like. Um, I, I would go on uh, Amazon and I would check, you know, our ranking. And first it was, you know, number 83 and then it was number 52. And then, and then all of a sudden it was number one in a couple different uh, categories, self-help, uh, leadership, and not just for Kindle, but for all uh, business books. And so that it was just, it was just so thrilling and beyond anything that I think either one of us ever imagined. Right. Just the number of books sold and the fact that it just kept going up and up in the ranks. And really we have our, our incredible friends and family and colleagues to thank for that. And in social media today, I don't know if that would have been possible, um, you know, 10 years ago without social media um, for, you know, two no name authors to have their book go to number one like that. So and get it the was word really, out. That's really great. exciting. That's great. Uh, when you uh, tell us a little bit about the book, Profit from the Positive, and what is one of your favorite tools in Profit from the Positive? Sure. Um, Profit from the Positive um, is such a practical guide. It's first and foremost a business book. It's not, not a positive psychology book. We draw upon positive psychology research behind all 31 of our tools, but it is really a practical guide that anyone from a frontline manager all the way up to the C-suite uh, can actually use to boost the performance of their team, their organization, uh, and even their own productivity. I would say one of my favorite tools um, that really tends to resonate with the, the leaders that I work with and their teams uh, is Carol Dweck's work from Stanford around the what she calls the growth versus the fixed mindset. Um, in Profit from the Positive, we refer to it as the expert versus the learner mindset. Those terms seem to resonate more with our, our clients. And I can't tell you how often that comes up both in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as well as when I'm working with a particular team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to go a little bit more depth into research and your coaching experience, what research finding do you see yourself using most frequently when you coach the executives that you coach? Um, I don't mean to be boastful, um, but I do tend to use my own research that Dana uh, Arakawa and I did uh, when we were a part of the, the MAP program at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, what we discovered around giving frequent recognition and encouragement. Um, I use that often. Because, so tell us more about that. How do you yeah. use it? What is it specifically and how do you use it? Well, what we learned is that when managers who give more frequent recognition and encouragement to their staff, or their peers, uh, or even their boss, um, people's productivity increases. And how much so, it was actually quite surprising in our study. Um, those managers that scored in the top quartile for giving frequent recognition and encouragement compared to those that scored in the bottom quartile, 
um, they saw a boost of 42% in productivity. So that's huge. And we've always known it's a, a nice thing to do, and a lot of people just do it naturally. It's, it's who they are as a leader. But for some other leaders, they really need to see some evidence, like why bother, why should I do this? And the other part of it that, that I often get um, some resistance on is, well, you know, it, it won't seem genuine. It'll be mm -hmm. fake. And so that's when I'll also share with these leaders that um, there are a few things you have to keep in mind to be sure that it doesn't backfire. And one of them uh, is Carol Dweck's work around process praise versus person praise. And what that means, Senya, is that um, if we just go around saying to our, our employees, you know, good job, nice job, and just kind of sound like a cheerleader, that's really hollow. And it will backfire and people will, won't think that you're sincere. Truly, if you describe the process by which they achieve those results, for example, Senya, I really appreciate the amount of time and energy you put into developing those reports to me. You did an external scan. I know that took a lot of time, and I really appreciate it. It's a quality piece of work. I'm telling you what process you used to achieve that, mm -hmm. and that's just much more meaningful. And as an employee, you'll know that, I knew what it took for you to deliver that piece of work. I completely agree with you. I'm uh, coaching somebody right now who is going through performance reviews. And as a manager, she thinks, well, I can tell this person they're good at communication. Or I can tell them these are the specific things you did. That's more replicable. That person can come back in a month and do those same things again. Right. And we, we tend not to use the term praise in the business world, right? It's, we tend to use the word feedback. So, uh, yes, the piece of research is around praise person versus, you know, process praise. Um, but it really is feedback that we're talking uh, um, about. I have a question for you from the point of view of uh, looking at what you've accomplished so far that you've been running the Greenberg group for so many years that you coach executives at very well-known companies and somebody might think, okay, well, Margaret, she's just, she's got it all together. What I'd really like to hear is what is something that you learned, a learning experience that you had perhaps earlier on with coaching executives that you still use these days when you're coaching? Yeah. You know, Senya, every time I coach a leader, I learn something. I take something from that call as much as I'm giving and I'm serving as their coach. And of course, you have to self-manage right, yourself because it is all about the client. But often, I almost every call, I hang, hang up the call or I leave that room, and I think, wow, I just learned something you know, from this particular client. And one of the ones that sticks most uh, in my mind is to think big. Mm. And I know as, as a coach, we should always be encouraging you know, our clients to you know, think big. And I, I can think of one client in particular that – he just models that so um, he's a busy, you know, CIO, chief information officer, and also the chief operating officer of a big Fortune 200 company. And yet um, he found the time to go back and pursue a master's in not technology, but in museum studies mm -hmm. because it's a passion that he has. And I mean, most people would say, well, how could you possibly do that and have this big job and have a family? Um, but it, 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 it's about making it happen, something that's really, really important to you. So always think big. And, and I take that with me. Uh, and you often encourage me to think big, right? For sure. Uh, even this book, uh, I think I would have probably, uh, if I were doing it myself, I probably would have just self-published it because I would think, oh, who wants to publish a book by Margaret Greenberg, right? And you were like, no, um, we're going we're gonna to get a big publishing house to publish this. And it's like, hmm, really? Well, we both. And, that was a good encouragement back and forth. Yeah, yeah it definitely was. So um, thinking big, uh, I've learned that over and over again from my clients. And it really propels me to think big, too. I, I wonder if that's going to be related to your thoughts about this last question that I have for you, which is you started your own business 17 years ago. If you were starting it today, what is something that you would do right out of the gate from day one? You know, I think I would have been a little more um, targeted on 
who I wanted to coach. And maybe I need to needed to go through those stumbling blocks, right, to figure out, you know, who did I want to coach? But I think if I was clearer in my own mind of the type of leader that I wanted to coach, I might have been able to just propel myself forward, you know, faster. So I'll give you an example. Um, you know, I took all comers in the beginning, right? I wanted to build this practice and anybody that, that needed a coach, um, I, I raised, I'd love to coach you. And what I learned through the process, there's, there's actually a profile of the type of person that I love to coach. Um, I love to coach people that are highly analytical, uh, left brain uh, types because they are very smart. And yet where they uh, trip up sometimes is on the more social and emotional intelligence side of things, which is really where I can I can help. Uh, so I love I love people that are like technically, you know, really smart. I also um, love to coach leaders who are already on top of their game. They're already good at what they do. Um, they're not broken. They don't need fixing. I, I always say I don't do fixer uppers, although I did a few early on. Um, but people that are already good at what they do and together though, I can help them be even better. So, um, those are, I wish I had just given it a little bit more thought, um, about the, the type of person that I would love to coach. That's a nice conclusion to have come to. It sounds like you are very, uh, the funnel is very clear for you. What is the right kind of person? You can see where the filter is as soon as you meet that kind of client. Right. That's right. And, and if it's not a good fit, I generally know, like intuitively, I know right away and then I can refer them. Mm -hmm. I have a great coaches network, mm -hmm. you know, through you uh, and others. So I know where to refer those other people. Uh, I must say I have so enjoyed uh, this past uh, 18 months. I've been coaching 11 what are called hypos, high potentials uh, at one particular company who are in a two year rotational program. And they're in their late 20s to their late 30s. And I haven't worked with um, leaders that young in a while. I, I tend to work with more senior executives who tend to be more in their 40s and, and 50s. And it has been such a joy to coach these younger leaders at a time in their career that, um, you know, they're really going to be through this program brought up to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't mean just in the hierarchy. I mean, in terms of really broadening their leadership uh, abilities. And that has just been thrilling um, to see. So um, I love I love that population as well. Perfect. So you, thank you for joining us for 15 minutes with Margaret Greenberg. And this was PPND TV. Thank you.